Hello to all my friends and family and welcome. Welcome to Jim's 5am club. Here I am in the car heading to Barrel for lunch today. And uh, it's raining outside, it's uh, overcast. And we'll see what sort of weather we, uh, we, we receive once we, once we get to Barrel. But I do have time for one more 5am club. And I've set myself a goal for six for today. And this is the second one. A very, very interesting book entitled Breakfast with Socrates by an author named Robert Roland Smith. So uh, I love, I love uh, reading books which uh, basically tap into the ancient um, uh, philosophies and the knowledge of uh, people from the past. And this is an interesting book, how we can basically tap into the mindset of Socrates in this contemporary world that we live in. So the author of this book, Robert Roland Smith, comes up with a, an interesting quote just to kick it off, just to get our minds spinning in the right way. And he says that you can't be free to be right unless you can be free to be wrong. So an interesting and profound way to uh, start this book summary. But it's, uh, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. And I've just been reminded here that this is all about freedom of speech. And we all have different perspectives. We've all got a different, a different past because you and I have all had a different past. Even if you were my identical twin, we're going to have a different past, a different present, and most certainly a different future. So because we've all had different slithers of reality and different things, experiences in the world, we're going to be using a different baseline and different rules to measure our experiences by and to understand the world. So the author kicks off with a uh, first formal point where he says, because a lot of people get mixed up when they hear about the word philosophy and think it's all about esoteric sort of thinking and it's all, all complicated and, and bullshit. I guess a lot of people probably think it's a lot of bullshit as well. But the author here reminds us and makes a very clear point that philosophy gives you the tools to make wise decisions every day because philosophy is the most practical discipline of all. The word philosophy comes from the word, from the compound word, philosophia, which means the love of wisdom. And wisdom, I guess, is the accumulation of knowledge, of practical knowledge. And the more you accumulate and the more you're able to incorporate <laughs> okay, I hear you. And the more you can incorporate it into your world and into your decision making process, and as we said, it's OPE, other people's experiences, we don't have to live a life and make all the mistakes in order for us to learn. Uh, we can learn also from the mistakes of others as well as from the example of others. So let's not just get caught up to think that we don't need philosophy. We don't need to read books. We don't need to learn from the others because all of it we can use and incorporate it into our skill set to make us better abled decision makers. And the author then goes on to say that one of the strengths of philosophy asking better questions. I'll stick to it because it's, we've come back. So we can make better decisions by asking better questions. And philosophy is all about asking those better questions. Because philosophers were all about trying to understand the world around them. So uh, asking better questions or the practice of thinking critically in your everyday life can help us navigate the world 
in the best way possible. We're not talking about perfection. We're not talking about being the best at what we do or being better than anybody else. We're just looking for a path for us to live a better life. Take the old Hume Highway, B73 exit so the Smith author Gold. then goes on to talk about something which I found really, really powerful. And he basically said, or he basically said that every single morning when we get up and every single moment throughout the day, we are fighting a battle of egos in our heads, a battle of egos. And it's important to understand that he didn't say you're fighting a battle of ego, you're fighting a battle of egos. And what does he mean by egos? Because it really, really captured my attention. Because each and every person in the morning has a morning routine. And even the people who have got a lack of routine has a routine in their own way. So whether or not you've got a process in the morning or you don't have a process in the morning, it's a cycle. It's a cycle that you're caught up in and it's a cycle that determines how your day will pan out and how you, how you will live your life. And as I said, each person has a morning routine and if you don't have a routine or if you don't have a process, you know, just the fact that you're waking up late, you're brushing your teeth in a rush, you're running out the door and your day is rush, 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 means that that's your routine. <laughs> it may not be the most productive or a routine that serves you, but it is your routine. So you need to understand that each and every person has a routine. And Freud, we, 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 we call on Freud now. Freud calls it the ego and the superego. So these are the two egos that we have battling for a place in our lives. So this is really powerful, so hear me out. And as I said, I found this very, very profound and I can relate to it and I, I'm sure that you'll be able to relate, relate to it as well. Freud said that we have an ego and a super ego, but the ego is our lizard brain our primitive brain, our primeval brain, which wants, wants us to live comfortably. It wants us to live without stress. It wants us to live without surprises. And that's our primitive brain. That's how we were at wired in order to survive because surprises meant danger. Stress meant danger. So in order to survive, we needed to live as comfortable and as safe as possible. The superego, according to Freud, is society telling us how we need to behave. And there's a battle between the two. On the ha one hand, we want to be safe. We want to be calm. We want to be unsurprised. And yet society, family, the people around us, media, advertising, all of those things are inviting us to, uh, to behave in a different way, to dream, to look forward to a lot of different things, which causes a cognitive dissonance. It causes us to battle in our heads. So the author then goes on to say, that the moment you stop hitting the snooze button and climb out of bed is a massive <coughs> super ego win. The, the time when you all of a sudden decide to arrive 10 minutes early to an appointment is a win for the super ego. So the author here goes on to suggest to us and it's a call to action for us to not let our ego surrender to your superego 
and, and thus delayed gratification. I think it should be the other way around. You mustn't let your superego surrender to your ego. I'm a little bit now, a little bit mixed up now, but uh, I'll have to review that. But uh, point taken, you try and figure it out. Should your ego be surrendering to your superego or your superego to your ego? And the question that the author then throws it at us in order to figure out what's more important in your life is the following question. Would you relive every moment of your life in exactly the same way? Would you be happy to relive your life in exactly the same way? And the author then goes on to say that sometimes it's, you're better off to abandon the herd, which is societal pressure, which is peer pressure. Sometimes it's better to abandon, abandon the herd and to live on your own terms. So I guess the point that I made earlier, don't let your ego surrender to your superego and thus delayed gratification, I think is the point that this author is trying to make. To try and live your life on your terms and not to be bullied, not to be overly influenced by family, friends, society, media, um, and all of those other influences, which could be toxic in some ways, that are pushing, pushing, pushing you to live the life that you don't really want, that you don't subscribe to. So the author they're here in a call to action, which is something we want to, we're discussing and we're just trying to figure out. So I'm not pushing this in your direction. As I say, Jim's 5am club enables me to be an emissary, a messenger, just being the bridge between an author, their book, their message, and the rest of us. So uh, we need to try and live our life on our terms, which means that we sometimes need to, to ditch all the bullshit fantasies that surround us. The fantasies that we've been sold by, uh, by uh, family and friends, by school teachers, by the media, by uh, the whole system. So uh, I love this point. I love this end point where the author then once again invites us to embrace our non-conformity and to not road, afraid to be different and to know it's okay. It's okay to be you because only you can be you. Continue on B73 for four kilometers. We're just going through Mittagong and I've just remembered the number of wonderful years that we've spent down here with Paula, my children, my late uncle, Theo Bageli, passed away. How many years ago, Paula? Twenty. Twenty years. Twenty years. We'll be going to, uh, to pay our respects to him. But just to think that uh, Mittagong Barrel was our second home for many, many years. But we're, uh, we're down here to, uh, to visit family. We're going to uh, visit Theo Yurgia, our lovely Theo Yurgia, boy, <laughs> we love so much. And um, what else do what else, what else I want to say? <laughs> um, and let's finish off. We finish off. We've just gone through and uh, had a breakfast with Socrates. We've gone on a uh, a journey, a journey where we've hopefully discovered something new about ourselves, discovered some something about our ego and super ego. And let's finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive. I'm well. I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, stay reasonable, and by all means. I encourage each and every one of us to live our lives on our terms. As long as living our lives on our terms doesn't cause grief, 
pain and suffering to those around us, um, to our, our, our partners, our children, our families, friends, our work peers. By all means, we need to manage the life that we live and to ensure that uh, we, we um, I'm not saying conform, but I'm saying take into consideration each and everybody's sensitivities so that we live a cooperative life. We learn to cooperate with those around us so that we all benefit. Anyway, uh, I look forward to coming to you from a different location with a different message. The good news is that we're uh, heading into Barrel now. I've got a, uh, a, capable, a capable chauffeur today in Paula. And the good thing is that the rain Showing has stopped. Results for today's show for a long your route. So uh, we've also got uh, Marika telling us uh, <laughs> that we're heading in the right direction. Um, but uh, the rain has stopped. So I may be able to do a walk and talk through Barrel to deliver my third vlog for the day and uh, keep on the path of self-discovery. All right then, so thank you. Yasas Filakia from Jim on Jim's 5am club, Tatapume. And I hope you got as much out of this book summary as I did because I am convinced that I've never read a book or I've never been through a book summary that I haven't learned something new. I haven't been able to at least join a couple of dots. And sometimes it's a little bit like um, a crossword puzzle. We may Showing learn one thing new. We may find out one new thing that may link a number of uh, dots together and have a breakthrough in learning and enable us all to live a better and more productive life. So thank you, Yasas, once again, and I'll finish now, I promise. <laughs> Otherwise, Paul is going to kill me. Yasas, bye again. Ciao. Opa.